but I'm going to say that the, the Holy Spirit, this is what we need. And this, these words that Anne here is going to read are Jesus' words. They're from his mouth. Think of it. They're from, these words are from the mouths of Jesus, the Son of God, who came and gave his life for us. <coughs> and he said, before he left, before he left, he said, there's something coming. I have to leave for it to come. I have to leave for the Holy Ghost to come. For the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to fill you. He's going to fill you with me. Amen. He's going to fill us with Jesus. And this is God's word for us today, guys. It says in Revelations that the Christians, the believers, they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And that just means we walk with him. We walk with Jesus. Guess what? We fall with Jesus. We rise with Jesus. We fail with Jesus. But he never leaves us and he never forsakes us because he sent his Holy Spirit. And this is what we're coming up to, the Pentecost. There's how many days between the resurrection and the Pentecost? 40 days, 40 days, guys, from when we celebrated at Easter. Oh, 50, Boys, listen. 50 days. <laughs> from when we celebrated at Easter, when Jesus died on the cross, rose again, and I think it's 70. 50 days, because no, he walked for 40 days, and then they went back to... 50 the, days later, so it's 50. he sent the disciples to the upper room. To the upper room and that's where he sends us right now because guess what we got to get ready we got to get ready for that holy spirit to come that holy spirit anointing mm -hmm. this is life for the christian the holy spirit if you're a christian and you believe in jesus the holy spirit comes upon you but then Jesus said he's going to send the Spirit to fill us, to fill us. And this morning, we're just going to, if you can lift your hands, if you can dance, if you can bow before him, if you can close your eyes, if you can raise your hands, whatever you can do, get ready for the Holy Spirit to fall. Get ready. We're going to sing the song another time, but Annie's going to read this scripture. This is in Luke 24, 49, if I can see that right. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 24, 49. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Amen. Read it again, Annie. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Amen. Read Amen. it again, Annie. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father had promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Amen. Amen. Lord, we, we take this word of God, Lord, this holy word of God, and we pray it this morning as we've come here together to worship you. We pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us this morning, God. The fire, God, to flow through this room like a mighty rushing wind, the Bible says. So let's listen for that wind to come. Let's listen for it. Let's receive it. Listen, you got to receive the gift. Otherwise, it just sits there and looks good, and it's in a wrapping paper, but Jesus says, open it up. Open up the gift. Take it. 
It's going to help you to live. It's going to help your family to survive. It's going to help you to be healed. In this song, it says, he'll heal you. The Holy Spirit is our healer. He's our healer. He will heal us. So let's sing this together and let's just, let's just pray it. Let's just believe it. Listen, we can believe in Jesus or we can believe in Jesus to where it changes us. We don't want religion. Do you want just a bland religion that's just nothingness and religion and do this and do that? Or do you want a life, a life with the Holy Ghost where when you lay hands on people, they're healed. When you lay hands on people, they're set free. When the power of God comes into you, where you feel like you're going to explode because his love is so powerful. His forgiveness is so great. Lord, this is what we need this morning. This is what we need every day. Can you say amen? Amen. That means you agree. That's all he wants. Your agreement. Feel led to share a little testimony. This morning and we were talking as we're singing this, I'm thinking... I've always said our ministry should be called grace (laughs) because that's what God poured out on us. Chris and I, such grace and mercy and forgiveness. And this morning we were talking about it and I've always said to to Chris, to Grandpa, I've always said that he had the most wonderful testimony that could touch the hearts of people. And we were, we were listening to this guy that we follow, his ministry, Victor Marks, and he'd been through like all this abuse in his life as a child. His, his stepdad actually tried to kill him, uh, put him in a sexually abused him, put him in a freezer to die as like a four-year-old child. But God rescued him and saved him and saved his life and, and he's risen up as an adult man to, he rescues children in countries where it's war-torn and, and where they've been abused or misused through trafficking and different things. And, and his son came to him and his wife and he said, Dad, You've only told me a little bit of your life. You've only told me a few of the things that happened to you. And he said, Dad, don't you want me to know more? He said, I want to know more. I want to know what happened to you. And his dad, who's this big guy, he reminds me of Chris. He's got these big arms, big shoulders. (laughs) And he's crying and he says, he says, no, I don't want you to know. You're my child. I don't want you to know the horrific details. I want your life to be protected. And, I, and it just brings it all together because Chris said that he related to that because cause I'm always saying, Chris, share your testimony. Share what God did, like brought you from a, what is it, park bench to a pulpit, right? That's the story we know. He brought him from a park bench to a pulpit. Thank you, Jesus. And every day he, he lives his, the mercy and grace of God. And he said, I want, he goes, I can relate to that because I don't want my grandkids to know who I was. I want them to know who I am now. That Jesus has taken control of my life. I don't want him to see the bad. I want him to see the good. And it just makes me think of the grace that God has poured on both of us and our testimony and how he's just taken us out of deep, deep darkness into his glorious light, into his glorious light. And I thank God every day for that light even though sometimes we still live in that dark part 
or we look back. You know, God doesn't want us to look back when we've been forgiven. He doesn't want us tending that nasty old grave. He wants us living in the light. He wants you running in the light. He wants you jumping in the light, kids. Jumping in the light of Jesus. That's what he wants for you and we want for you. And I just pray that as his grace has been poured upon us, that we can extend it to to all of you. That you can receive that perfect grace. We we were joking about it earlier (laughs) because we all need it. But his grace is his goodness. It's his love. And he poured it on Chris. He poured it on him. He changed his life from black to white, from night to light. He changed my life from brokenness, from horrible things, from divorce, from brokenness to life and hope and joy. And he can change all of our lives. No matter what it is, no matter what it is, we just need to run. We need to run to him. Amen? And I just, I love this. I love this. Because I know who I am because I know who he is. You're going to know who you are when you know him. Because it's only that connection. When you say, here, God, take my hand. Take my hand, God. Take me, lead me. That's what Grandpa said on that park bench. When the, when an angel came to him and said, if you don't go home, you're going to die. And he had people trying to kill him. And he got on a bus and he came to Vestal. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and, you know, the story began there of all, for all of us here, right? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I just believe, I believe this ministry, this house of God is the house of grace. It's the grace of new, it's the grace of new beginnings. All things pass away. That's what his word says. All things become new. Amen. And I just pray that over everyone here this morning. All things passed away. All things become new. So let's go to verse 2. Sing it one more time. Good morning. Happy, happy Mother's Day. All right. Good morning. I get to sing my Happy Mother's Day song to you. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. It's a funny thing I did that because um, every time the girls have a birthday, I call them up and I sing them a happy birthday. And I kind of make my own rendition of the happy birthday song. So I thought I would do the same thing for all you mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day to you. There you go. It sounds something like that. It's pretty corny, but, you know, they laugh, and that's all that matters. I don't care. I just want to make them happy. All our children. Today is the 12th, Sunday, Mother's Day. You guys woke up to a surprise this morning. That's right. Woke up early and went down there. Did you see them baskets hanging? Beautiful. Praise the Lord. All right, so Grace, let's take up an offering. Come on down. Father, I thank you and praise you for this day. I thank you, Lord God, for your blessings and your anointing. I pray, Father God, for your spirit. 
Lord God, to fill this house, to fill this temple, to fill each individual person here, Lord God, to overflowing. And I pray, Lord God, that you would pour out on us and that you would pour through us to others. And I pray that you would bless us, Lord, abundantly, that you would keep your hands upon us and that you would shine your face on us, Lord God. That, Lord, you would give us lands, large tracts, and that, Lord, you would provide your personal protection for us, Lord God. And I pray this, Lord God, over our finances. Lord, we need miracles, always needing you, our provider, Jehovah Jireh, Lord God. And we just believe this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I got to blow the shofar. God is good. All right. Since today is Mother's Day, we're going to read from Proverbs chapter 31. Verse 25 through verse 28. <clears throat> How many of you kids woke up this morning and said happy Mother's Day to your mom? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, boy. Huh? How many of you guys said happy Mother's Day to your mom? Amen. Just remember, if it wasn't for your mom, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> I haven't done it yet to my mother, but I will. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at the times to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom, and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. You can't say it any better than that. King Solomon, in all of his wisdom, penned that. And you need to read, especially you men, need to read all of Proverbs 31, especially from verses 10 on to 31. Strength and honor are her clothing. We can take a lesson from this proverb, especially you, you young men. You can wake up in the morning and you can call your mom blessed. Mom, you are blessed. Blessed is my mother. You know what you're doing? You're speaking life. You're speaking life. And you know what God says that'll do for you youngins? is that God said that he will keep you and he will protect you and he will bless you because you are blessing your mom and you are honoring your father. He said to honor your mother and father so that you may have a long life and a prosperous life. So we need to honor our mother and fathers because it will go well with you, kids. Amen? Today we celebrate Mother's Day. And a little quote, all of our stories all start with a mother's story. Because if it wasn't for your mother, we wouldn't be here. 
If it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't have a story. Amen? Amen? It all starts with a mother's story. Our family is doubly blessed, triply blessed, quadruply blessed. Because we have a great mother that's here in this church, sitting right here on the couch, that has some of the greatest stories ever told. (laughs) She's a storyteller. And she has some great stories when she was a young child going from church to church, walking. And she was a member of the congregational church at a wee young age. And the Methodist church. She was a member of both. She actually was a member, a signed up member of both. And that was a big deal back then. To be a member of the church. It all starts back. All of the mothers in our family all start back to Joan. All starts with her story. And her story is passed down to her daughters, her six daughters. And that's where they get their story. As she passed down the good news of the gospel and taught them to love the Lord their God with all their heart. And you can see it in all their lives. I can see it in my wife's life. It's not just her words, but it's her actions. It's her prayer life, her dedication to God that's unwavering. All started with the love of a mother and the love of a woman who loved God with all her heart. And loves God with all her heart. And that's Joan. She is a great mother. A lot of you don't know this, but Joan would pick up kids on the streets when they did their ministry here. And would take them and would clothe them. Take them shopping for clothes. At James Way at the time. But James Way was a big store, I know. Same with Philadelphia Sales. Back in the day. That was before Walmart even came around. But she would pick them up. She would also deliver food to families in need. And do great things. And they had a great ministry here on this hill. They would have celebration services where they would invite all of the town of Owego would come. And there's videos of kids and people being baptized in the pond, in the pool, with outdoor concerts going on here, and celebration services happening prior to this building being built. And it was their love and dedication to God that built this building. Because they could have bought a cottage in Florida or somewhere else. But they chose to build a temple so they can worship God because their home church was outgrowing their home. And when they had 65 couples coming, that's a lot of people in a little in a house. I mean, they got a pretty good sized house, but I can imagine it being packed. But it's all because of the love of God. And that trait is passed down to her daughters. Which her daughters have passed down. I know my wife has passed it down to our daughters. And our daughters are passing it down to their kids. And their daughters. You know, we have three great future mothers sitting back there. Someday. Someday. But they have great resources and a great heritage to be proud of. To be proud of. That is something that is everlasting, I believe. 
It reminds me of Timothy, the story of Timothy with his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois. And when Paul saw Timothy, he goes, the same spirit that's in your grandmother lives in you. And that same spirit is the same spirit. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he lives forevermore. And he lives inside of you. And it's called the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that we pass on to our children when we lay hands on them and we pray for them. When we go to their rooms and we pray over them at night. When we, when we pull out the Word of God and we pray over it and we read it to them. And we build their spirit up in them. So that they can withstand the days of evil when they come. Because being a mother is not easy. Being a mother is not an easy thing to be. If you think about it, they have a great responsibility. They take care of their household. They take care of their husbands. They praise and worship God. Take care of That's the order. God, husbands, children. That's the order of a family. And mothers have a great responsibility to their children. To raise them up right. It says in the word, to raise up your child in the way of the Lord. And in the end, he may not depart from it. A mother has a lot of responsibilities. It's not an easy, that's a full, it's a 24-7 non-stop job. Basically, you ask any mothers here, it's 24-7, it's work. It's work, 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year, there is not a day off for a mother. Even when they're sick, when they're feeling ill, and they're not well, they still have to be a mother. They still have responsibilities that they have to do and do. There's a few things I thought, as I what I see as going through the Word and the Bible and knowing the Bible and reading through it, there's a few things that I've picked up about mothers that I would like to share here today. And I can sum it up in three words. Trust the Lord. Mothers, trust the Lord. If you trust the Lord, and you put Him first, in your home and in your lives, then I guarantee you, all will go well with you. God will not fail you or forsake you. Over time, over time, over time, the women that have trusted God in the Word have been blessed abundantly. They've been blessed abundantly. So the greatest thing you can do in your life is trust the Lord. The hardest thing you do in your life is trust the Lord. You don't have to be a mother to do that, to find out that that's hard. Even for me, it's hard for me to trust the Lord. In my flesh, I've told my wife, well, God can't go out and dig that hole. God's not going to go out and sell that job. i got to do my part. But I'm not trusting in God. Like I should be. Three words, trust the Lord. That's one thing. One thing that you get out of this whole message. Lean on that. Don't forget it. It might not be easy. God never said it, the road was going to be easy. He said the road that's wide is the easy road and that leads to destruction. God said the road will be narrow. That leads to life. The song, the narrow road we sing, you know, we haven't sang it yet, but I've been, I've been playing it on my guitar and listening to it. And singing along with it. 
The narrow road sometimes might be lonely. The narrow road sometimes might be windy. The narrow road sometimes might be long. There might be potholes in that road. There might be construction, <laughs> detours on that road. And if you're a mother, you know exactly what I mean. But the Lord promises you that he will never fail you or forsake you. It might not be easy. But he will never fail you or forsake you. He will uphold you with his mighty right hand. He is your rock and your refuge. He is the place where you go to. When you run to your prayer closet. When your child is hurt. He is the place where you go. When calamity strikes your family. And you don't know who to lean on. But you've got to lean on God. And you've got to press into him. He is the one you need to go to. Because he will never fail you or forsake you. He will keep you and he will protect you. If you trust in him. Sometimes the right decisions are the hardest decisions. Especially when it comes to letting go of your children. To this day, I still want to have all my kids in my house. To this day, I still want to have all my daughters back and living in our house. And not only do I want to have all my daughters back, I want to have all their kids, their husbands. I want them all, I want them all close. And I'm so blessed as a man to have them all close. But I don't know how many times I've, I've told Jordan and Annie, that you can just come back and live with us. Then the kids, the boys can come and live with us. All of them. I want them all close. Because you love them dearly and you want nothing but the best for them. And as a father, you want to protect them and keep them. And you want to keep them safe. You know? But the hardest thing for me is letting them go and trusting God. Because I know that God's bigger than I am. God's stronger than I am. I know as I'm, I'm not going to even say it, but as I'm feeling my age, I know like I'm not as strong as I used to be. I'm not as fast as I used to be. But I'm twice the man I used to be. Because when I first came here, I weighed 128 pounds. And now I weigh almost 200, you know, something. <laughs> you can do the double, you can do the double math. So now I'm twice the man I used to be. That's because of a good woman. But it's hard to let go and to let God, is what I like to say. We got to let go and let God. Because God's got a path for each one of them. And it's not easy doing that. That's one of the hardest things that a mother has to face. Is to let go of their kids. And then to place them in the hands of God. A loving father. Who's going to take care of them. Who's going to watch over them. Who's going to provide for them to keep them in health. And even if things go awry, even when things don't go the way they're planned, when calamity strikes or something happens, you still got to trust God. And that's some of the hardest things. When we see kids going through struggles and hard times, being rebellious, because trust me, we've been there with our kids. There's been some rebellion times. But just to trust God. Because God has saw every one of them through it. And God's blessed them. <clears throat> I believe Julie and I talked a little bit about some of the great 
women. I know we talked about one. I, I think I mentioned it, I don't know, it was the other day. Some of the great women in the Bible who've actually just trusted God and God blessed them. And it wasn't easy for them to trust God. They had a hard road. Take, for example, Abraham's wife, Sarah. Abraham's wife, Sarah. When God promised Abraham that he would make him the father of nations. And Sarah's name wasn't Sarah, it was Sarai. At the time. God told Sarah that she was going to have a baby. Well, there was a little problem with that. Sarah was barren, and she was in her older age. And she was like, there's no way this is going to happen. How can this happen? You can read all of the, you can read the whole story of Sarah in Genesis chapter 17 and chapter 18. And then you can read a little bit more when she actually gets the blessing, when she gets to birth her son Isaac in chapter 21. But God blessed Sarah. You know what Sarah did when she heard about that? When she overheard Abraham talking to God. When God came and met him. And God was saying that Sarah, his wife, was going to be with child in a year. And Sarah overheard it and she laughed. She's like, she laughed. And then you know what she did? She tried to deny it to God's face. And he said, no, you laughed. She goes, no, I didn't laugh, God. And he goes, no, you laughed. I heard you. You laughed. He said, this time next year you will be with child, and you will have a child. And even though she was, and Abraham fell to his face, and he even thought, how can I have a child in my old age? I'm 100 years old, and Sarah, my wife, is 90. How can we have a child at that age? That's like mom having a child. Think about that. She didn't have a child. That was a blessing from the Lord to have children back then. You know, that's how it, that's how it was. That's how you knew you were blessed, by having lots of kids. That was the blessing of the Lord, to have a big family back there. Nowadays, they tell you just the opposite. They don't want you to have children. Decrease the population. That, is, that message there is from the devil. Yeah. It is truly from the devil. Because if you look at that message, that message has ruined some nations. They say Japan would no longer be Japan. Future generations, there will be no one left. Because they are believing in this lie. The same with Americans. Why do I want to have children in this day and age? When they have to go through all this hardship. Why would I want to bring them into this evil world? That's the lie of the devil. I guarantee you. The Islams. The Islamic religion. Theirs is to populate as many kids as they can possibly have so they can share and spread their religion and it will grow larger than Christianity. But God blessed Sarah, even in her old age. She laughed. And do you know she named her son Isaac? And by the way, the name Isaac means laughter. The name Isaac means laughter. Her child brought her laughter, brought her joy. 
brought her peace, blessed her. And from Isaac, we get Jacob. And from Jacob, we get the tribes of Israel. And then it just multiplies from then on out. Sarah was blessed, even though the road wasn't easy for her, even though she was old and barren. It was hard. She had no human comprehension of what was even possible. But it said, with God, all things are possible. Another woman in the Bible that has always impressed me was Hannah. Hannah's story was a lot like Sarah's story. Hannah was another barren woman in her home with her husband, who husband who loved her, but her, her husband had other husbands. And the other wives of her husbands, of the other wives of her husband, were taunting Hannah and picking on her and telling her, oh, we have all these kids and you have none. So Sarah, or so Hannah one day went to the temple where Eli was, the high priest. And she was like speaking in tongues under her breath. She was, her mouth was moving and no words were coming out. And Eli, the high priest, thought she was drunk. And he was like, get that drunken woman out of this temple. And she's pouring out her heart to God. And she's saying, I'm not drunk. I have no child. I'm a barren woman. But one thing that I read when I read in there in 1 Samuel, it said, Hannah was praying. In the Lord's presence. Hannah was praying in the Lord's presence. That means the Lord was right there with her. He was hearing her prayers. He was right there with Hannah. At the temple. Hearing the prayers of her heart. Pouring her heart out to God. Lord, why? Why don't I have a child? Why don't I have a son that I can give to my husband? Then she made a decree. Lord, give me one son, and I will dedicate him to you all the days of his life. All the days of his life. As soon as he is weaned, I will bring him to the temple, and I will give him to you, Lord. God heard her prayer. And she kept her word to God. And we got the, one of the greatest prophets that ever walked the earth that actually anointed the first king of Israel and also anointed King David. Samuel the prophet. He said that Hannah, in her song, Hannah's song, which I'm going to read it to you here shortly because it's just it's a pretty amazing prayer. Hannah's song says that she went on to have seven more children after that. That she was blessed by God abundantly. Not only was she blessed, but she had a son that was blessed by God. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. He said, Hannah prayed after Hannah gave Samuel to the priest. To, to Eli to serve as in the Lord's temple. 
Hannah prayed, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is lifted up by the Lord. My mouth boasts over my enemies. Because I rejoice in your salvation. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. And there is no rock like our God. Do not boast so proudly or let arrogant words come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and actions are weighed by Him. The bows of the warriors are broken, but the feeble are clothed with strength. Those who are full hire, those who are full hire themselves out for food, but those who are starving hunger no more. The woman who is childless gives birth to seven, but the woman with many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and gives life. He sends some down to Sheol, and he raises others up. The Lord brings poverty and gives wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the trash heap. He seats them with noble men and gives them a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. He has set the world on them. He guards the steps of his faithful ones, but the wicked perish in darkness. For a person does not prevail by his own strength. Those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder into heavens against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give power to his king. He will lift up the horn of his anointed. Powerful prayer. Powerful prayer of Hannah. I can go on and on and on about all the mothers the great mothers of the Bible. And probably the most well-known mother of the Bible is Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, who is blessed above all women, it says in the Bible. Mary, who trusted God and said, May it happen to me, as you have said to the angel Gabriel, when he came and told her that she was going to be the one to carry Jesus, the Messiah, to save her people. And not just her people, but all the peoples of the earth, all nations, all tribes, All tongues. Mary, who carried the Son of God. Mary of all women. Probably had some of the greatest hardships that a woman could ever go through. Her life wasn't a bed of roses. While she was pregnant, she had to be carried by a donkey to Bethlehem, and at any moment could have given birth to be counted in a census by decree of, uh, of Caesar. Mary, who had to have her child in a barn, we would call it to this day, a manger. She didn't have the luxury of doctors or hospitals or epidurals, (laughs) right? 
or C-sections. No, she had animals in a manger, what we would call a barn. I couldn't imagine putting a pregnant mother out in my barn and saying, here you go, there's no room in my inn, but I've got a stable that I put a horse in that you're more than welcome to stay in and I'll throw some hay down for you. Can you imagine that? That's exactly what happened. You know, you think of some of these mothers in here in these, in these Bible times, and you think, oh, they're just praise and great reports. They went through hell, some of them, their whole lives. They weren't easy. After Mary had the child, Herod sent an army to Bethlehem to kill every male child from a certain age down. I can't remember the age, but down. From two years old down. But an angel came to Joseph in a dream and told him to take Mary and go to Egypt. So they had to flee to Egypt because of persecution. And then Mary had to raise her son knowing that he's the son of God like a normal child even though I'm sure Jesus wasn't normal. He turned water to wine was one of his first miracles. Healing the sick. Can you imagine being the mother of the son of the most high God and knowing it? Think about how you want to protect that child. Think of the responsibility that you would have going through your mind, knowing. You know in your heart that you conceived that child and it was by the Holy Spirit. It wasn't by a man, but it was by the Holy Ghost. And that he had a calling on his life from the moment he was conceived. Think about the thoughts that Mary must have thought. I can't. It's unbelievable. The responsibility that she had. The responsibility of raising him right. Making sure everything was perfect. Or close to. But then seeing her child when he starts his ministry. Being kicked out of their own town when he read the scriptures in their synagogues. And he said, today this scripture has been fulfilled. And they almost wanted to stone him. And they kicked him out and he said, a prophet is never honored in their own town. Mary, who saw her son beaten beyond recognition by the Roman soldiers. Mary, who saw her son hanging on a cross, suffering in agony to death. And then Jesus being dead for three days. Now does that sound like an easy task for a mother? To watch their own son? Who was innocent? Die on a cross. It's not easy being a mother. But do you know what Mary had in her heart? The promise of God that her son would be the Messiah, be the Savior of the whole world. She knew that in her heart, and she never let it go. It says that Mary took all these things, even the wise men, all these things that happened to her in her life and through in Jesus' life, 
It says that Mary pondered these things, meditated on them. She thought about them. She heard the, her words. She heard the words of her son. She remembered the words of Gabriel, the angel, when he came to her. She pondered them. She meditated on them. She thought of them. She didn't lose heart of them. And she knew that her son said in three days that he would be lifted up. That's why Mary was one of the Marys that went to the tomb on the third day and it was rolled away. Can you imagine the ecstatic of her and her heart knowing that her son, Jesus, is alive and now he's in daddy's house sitting at the right hand of God. But she sees him and she walks with him. I'm sure for 40 days she probably didn't want to let him go. But she probably was there when he ascended into heaven. It said that Jesus appeared to 500 people when he resurrected. Mary had the hard task of trusting the Lord. Trust God. Trust the Lord. The greatest thing you can get out of this message today is trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. God's got plans, and they're great plans. We put our trust in Him, our faith in Him. Everything hinges on Him. So trust God, trust the Lord. He has a plan, and it is a good one. And if you do that, it'll go well with you, and you will be blessed. You will be blessed. It might not be easy. God never promised us easy. There are hard things in life that we go through. All of us have gone through hard things. Unimaginable things, some of these things that we go through. There's hurt that is unimaginable. But God is faithful, and He promises you that he can heal that hurt if you trust him with it. If you trust him with it. There's people here that have lost fathers, lost mothers, friends, family members. Unimaginable things. Going through, going through sicknesses, disease, it's not easy when those things come against you. But if you trust God, no matter what happens, the outcome, no matter if God takes him from you, takes him away, if you trust the Lord, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. And they'll be in a better place. What greater place than it is to be with our Savior the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. One of these days, we're all going to be absent from this body. One of these days, we'll all be present in front of the Lord. And what is so exciting to me is Paul says that we only see in a mirror. But then when that time comes, when we see Jesus face to face, we'll fully know. We'll fully understand. We'll see all these promises. And that is what we got to look forward to. We don't look forward to this earth and to this world. We look forward to the one that's coming. We look forward to heaven. We look forward to being with our family. Amen? Amen. So, Lord, I thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, for this day. I pray for this word lord god i praise you and thank you for all these women that are here and that are representative and that are hearing i pray that you would bless them abundantly on this day they don't have an easy task lord god they don't have an easy road but lord you promised them to bless them and i pray that you would fill them with laughter and joy lord god i pray this lord god and I pray your anointing upon their lives and anointing 
upon their words and their thoughts and their deeds. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.